The best finish for outdoor wood projects is complicated, but I'm gonna make it easy for you. So what is the best outdoor finish? How well does the finish hold up against the elements? Can this finish prevent things like rot and decay in my climate? Is it easy to apply to my project? How often am I gonna have to reapply this finish? I'm gonna answer all of those questions for you and even more, but you might be surprised to hear that some of the secrets to the best finishes go way back, like all the way back to the 16th century. We're talking about guys like Antonio Stradivari. Ever heard of him? Stradivari was a legendary violin maker. People still pay crazy amounts of money for his instruments today, and experts are baffled by how he made them. And the biggest mystery? His secret varnish recipe. They still can't figure it out. Well, just like old Stratty's secret varnish recipe, the finish you choose can make or break your next outdoor wood project. I'm not an expert on finishes. I don't claim to be but I have done extensive research on the subject. And I come to realize that a lot of failure goes into making the best finishes for outdoor projects. So we're gonna be testing out different types of finishes, along with a really interesting type of finish that I think a lot of you might not have heard about yet. We're gonna look into some of the things about finishes that annoy most woodworkers. But one of the first things that came to mind was, why don't some finishes work? It's interesting to think that even Antonio Stradivari struggled with failure. The signature reddish color on the violins he made showed us that he was experimenting with different finishes over time just like we do today. So here are some of the common reasons why finishes don't work. Take it away, Kendall. Inadequate surface preparation. You have to pay attention to wood moisture content. If the wood's too wet, it can mess up your finish. Dirt, dust, and contaminants can play a role, as well as sanding too much. Too much sanding can make it hard for the finish to stick to because there isn't enough grain for the finish to hold on to. Also, the dust can get in between the grain that is left and make it difficult to apply a finish. Bonus tip here, round edges build finishes better than right angles. That's where some finishes fail most of the time. And of course, there's environmental factors, like ultraviolet light, also known as the sun. And then there's problems with using low quality finishes. One of the most meticulous woodworkers I know, Brian R., says when it comes to finishes, you get what you pay for. And then there's application and maintenance issues. You know, user error. God forbid it's you that made the mistake. Oh no, that's not the problem. I did everything right. It's not all right, guys, as long as we're talking about application issues, I think this safety tip is important. I know some people have had their shops burned down because of poor rag management. The combination of heat, oxygen, and cloth can lead to spontaneous combustion and start a fire. It can catch on fire at as low as 120 degrees Fahrenheit without a spark. So take care of your rags, people. Now this information is great and all, but I bet you're thinking, which one should I choose? Which one is best for my situation? Well, hold on to your bitches, I'm gonna show you. Stradivari's best violins were made between 1698 and 1725, his golden period. These are the ones everyone wants. Now along with the ever-changing red dye made from bugs, he also used conifer resin, sort of like this pine pitch right here, and topped it off with an oil base just like many other instruments back then. Now sometimes oil versus water base can be perceived as penetrating versus film forming finishes. But when researching this, we found it might not be true. Maybe because of hybrids. Hybrids are a mix of two types of finishes, penetrating and film forming. Think of them like a thin blanket that soaks into the wood at first, but then slowly builds up a protective layer on top. These are sometimes called wiping varnishes because they're easy to spread and control. Okay, so hybrids are a mix of two types of finishes, penetrating and film forming. Penetrating finishes soak into the wood, strengthen it from the inside out. They're less likely to peel, but might need more frequent reapplication. Film forming finishes. Think of this like painting a thin layer of plastic wrap on your wood. It creates a barrier on top, protecting it from scratches and water. It is tough, but one reason I don't like film forming finishes is because water gets underneath film finishes to cause cracking and peeling, etc. But it does keep the natural color of the wood, if you're into that.
The climate that you're in and the type of wood you're choosing will also affect the type of finish that you should use. Some woods, such as cedar and redwood, are naturally rot resistant, so they may not require as much finish. And if you live in an area that has a lot of rain and humidity, you'll need a finish that is resistant to water and moisture. Spar varnishes are really great for those water-stricken areas, but we're going to get into that later. Another bonus tip here, the end grain that touches the ground will suck up moisture and create problems later on. So you want to plug the ends of the legs with paint, rubber, or epoxy. It doesn't really matter because no one's going to see now you're thinking, these facts are fine and all, but which one is best for me? Which one of these different types of finishes should I choose? It's pretty safe to say that there are modern day fans of both oil-based and water-based finishes too. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of each of them. With improvements in recent years, water-based finishes allow for smaller particle sizes for better absorption. But also for the finish to stay active longer, letting the finish soak deeper into the wood. This allows them to go just as deep as oil-based finishes which wasn't always the case in the past. And some of the pros of oil-based finishes are a faster drying time, they have less odor than oil-based finishes, which means they have a lower VOCs. VOCs, or volatile organic compounds, evaporate in the air, causing pollution and a very strong smell. They're released when you open the can, apply the finish, and as it dries. They appear more in oil-based than water-based finishes. Water-based finishes are easier to clean up with just soap and water. They're less flammable and less likely to yellow over time. And as for the cons, they're not as durable as oil-based finishes, and they may require more frequent application. The lower quality finishes can leave annoying brush strokes, and they can be less resistant to UV rays. You should always inspect the wood for mildew and other signs of mold deep within the wood. Make sure you're not sealing the mold that's already present inside of the wood. Now for oil-based finishes. Unlike water-based finishes that rely on water as a carrier, oil-based finishes use solvents to deliver the protective finishes to the wood. One of the best pros of oil-based finishes is that they're tougher and they last longer. They penetrate deeper into the wood, they provide a rich luster while providing a better protection against moisture, and are less likely to peel and flake like water-based finishes. Some of the cons of oil-based finishes are longer drying times which may affect project deadlines. Higher VOCs with strong odors caused by solvents, they are harder to clean up and are more flammable due to the solvents they use as a carrier. The resins may yellow with UV exposure. Less yellowing oil-based finishes are available, but they use different compounds, which might not be as durable and can cost substantially more. And then there's organic versus inorganic oil. Organic oils, when combined with heat and moisture, create the perfect home for mold to grow. Inorganic oils can help solve this issue but they can be super spendy. Or you can also just add mildew sides to your oil to prevent mildew. A study that I ran into from the National Park Service suggests oils are food for mildew. So you're gonna wanna check the bottle you're gonna buy to see if it already includes mildew sides, or sometimes called biocides. And while you're at it, see if it includes UV protection. Some finishes may only be meant for vertical or horizontal services. So keep that in mind when choosing your finish. I will have all of this research along with the articles I'm citing in a Google Doc linked in the description below. So feel free to look at it if you want, but be forewarned, there's a lot to look at. So I didn't want to just talk about finishes, I wanted to get my hands dirty and see for myself. So I picked a few finishes that look promising, plus one that is so wild that I think it's going to change the game for everyone. Trust me, you're going to want to stick around for this one. A recent study found that Stradivari might have put a secret ingredient underneath his varnish. A protein base layer to help fill out the grain before he applied his varnish. Could this be part of why his violin sounds so amazing? Either way, he's got secrets that he took to the grave. Just like this bench here, it too probably belongs in a grave. We had previously burnt it in an attempt to preserve it, but now I'm gonna sand off this weathered gray layer and apply these finishes that I wanna test out. Ta-da! I brought the bench inside for a very good reason, and I'll let you guys know why later. Now it's important to note that we are not sponsored by any of the products in this video all but two of the products I paid for with my own money.
Rubio Monaco sent me their exterior product called Duro Grit. Duro Grit is an emulsified oil, which means the oil stays mixed as tiny droplets and suspended in water. It is a penetrating oil stain and sealer designed for all exterior wood products. One of the benefits is that it has UV and mechanical protection, meaning it resists dents and scratches well and also protects from damage from sunlight. They sent me two products. One is called Saddle Black and the other is called Grassland Beige. This is Grassland Beige on the right side here. Go ahead, roast me in the comments of how terrible I am at applying stain. Now we are applying the Saddle Black color. This is Minwax Teak Oil. It's a penetrating oil finish that's designed for woods like teak, mahogany, and rosewood, to name a few. It offers some UV protection. It protects marine surfaces, but only above the waterline. The downside is that it's susceptible to mold and mildew. As we discussed earlier, oils can act like a buffet for mildew in humid conditions. And it has a longer drying time of six to eight hours. I am optimistic about this water-based urethane spar from Verithane. Originally designed for boats, it's tough, waterproof, and basically weatherproof. Perfect for quick projects with up to three coats in one day. And now this finish caught my attention while I was researching this video. It is unlike anything we've seen so far because of one little benefit that the others we've talked about do not have. Total Boats Penetrating Epoxy. I reached out to Total Boat because I wanted to try their penetrating epoxy. I gotta point this out. Total Boat hooked me up. I only asked them for the cold weather formula. They also gave me the regular formula and a uh, varnish as well. Water based though. And then a buttload of mixing cups. Look at that. More than I'll ever probably need. That's awesome. It is a clear epoxy that soaks deep into the wood, making it super strong to prevent cracks and rot. Now I gotta stir this for two minutes. Total Bolt wanted me to stress to everyone to pay attention to which formula that you use. Each formula can only be cured at certain exterior temperatures, so read the info before you buy. With Minnesota's temperature fluctuations up and down, I decided to use the regular formula and keep the project indoors over the weekend. The penetrating epoxy fights off humidity, mold, and even salt. And there's a bonus, no stinky VOCs here, folks. And as for the game changer aspect of this product, you can use it to repair damaged and rotted wood too. Yep, that's right. It penetrates into the rotten wood fibers and the surrounding healthy wood to restore its structural integrity. Once it's cured, a light sanding and you're ready for paint and varnish. So if you're interested in this or any of the other products we've shown you today, I'll link it in the description below so you can check it out for yourself. It has been centuries since Stradivari made his last instrument. And even though we have speculated, we are still no closer to revealing his secret to the unique sound of those instruments. But what if that alone is what made it so special? The secret. Contrary to a study published in 2022, experts believe that there's nothing special about Stradivari's varnish, but I disagree. Regardless of what process or ingredients he used, I think aside from the unique sound of his instruments, it was the mystery of this varnish. It was the mystery that helped make these instruments worth millions of dollars. The fact that we have zero clue how we did it, and there's something we can learn from this. No matter what type or brand of finish you use, make it mysterious. So pick one and start with that. Maybe try them all. Heck, make your own mysterious varnish. Find a way to amaze your friends and family and keep them guessing. But one thing is for certain, the finish you use is basically useless without knowing the right species of lumber you need for your next outdoor project. And in this video right here, we tell you which species of lumber is the best and why it's not the type of lumber that you assume it's gonna be. See you there, brother. That's a wrap. That's a freaking wrap. That is a wrap on the longest, most difficult, most arduous researched video I've ever done. I hope you guys appreciate it. Holy moly, I got it!